All right, guys, as you could probably see there, I went to town on this little BK-18, but today we are going to be doing a review on the K-Bar BK-18, and this basically effectively serves as a review on the BK-16, and uh, I believe it's like the 14 or the 15. That one's not as common. I don't think they make it anymore. But anyways, so this is the K-Bar BK-18 in specific, but the handle and overall ergonomics are the the same across the BK lineup. So um, with these smaller BKs, the only difference is really forward of the blade and how the blade shape is. This one, of course, is the harpoon. And this one, of course, is in the full tan version, tan being one of my favorite colors for outdoor gear. Um, so that is why I chose it. That's why it looks this way. And overall, this little blade is pretty fantastic. Now I've featured this blade quite heavily in other videos where I've talked Talked about it being better than the uh, Gerber strong arm and as you guys can see or hopefully I could uh, you know showcase in this video why I think that is so the BK 18 is really quite a fantastic little blade because it comes in at about the same price as other budget offerings such as the prodigy such as the Gerber strong arm um, and many different others but the fact of the matter is it does use a really nice 1095 CV or chromium vanadium uh, mixed 1095 so that chromium gives you a little bit of extra uh, corrosion resistance the vanadium just helps overall and uh, so this is an alloy to 1095 and it is a really effective alloy and of course k-bar has been using it for many decades in their classic combat utility fighting blade but i digress so as far as the bk18 goes for being the price that it is, I think it is a really fantastic duty knife and overall wilderness survival knife under $100. It's a really nice blade for outdoors uh, kind of survival, even to a degree bushcrafting, though this particular option, the harpoon blade, probably wouldn't be my first choice for bushcrafting. I think the things that the harpoon blade or the harpoon style excel at is food prep because you have such a wide sweeping belly and you can really choke up on this blade and get nice slices. So it does work well for kind of a food processing, natural resource processing blade, but it also works really well for types of tactical environments. Of course, that's where the harpoon was originally designed and intended for um, because it is a piercing style. But like I said, that wide belly and wide grind do make this blade a little bit more slicey than the BK-16, which is just a standard drop point uh, styled blade that's a little bit more narrow. Overall though, either one that you get is going to be a fantastic option. And I really think it's hard to go wrong with the blade, especially for the value of it. The ergonomics too are probably the biggest thing that get me. The ergos on these BK 16 and 18s are absolutely squared away. They are super comfortable to hold. They don't have shock when you baton them. They're overall just very comfy blades and they don't have a lot of jimping up on the back. And of course there's no like spine ramps or thumb ramps or anything like that. So it does allow an unrestricted just uh, ability for you to put your thumb up on the back and get nice controlled push cuts. So aside from that, uh, there is also options for the handle uh, these grivery handles, while comfortable, are a bit slick, but you can get aftermarket micarta handles for these blades that would make it a lot more grippy. But for the sake of the video, this is the stock form. And uh, like I said, it is overall very well contoured and very comfortable um, as far as it stands. Um, once again, it is more than durable enough. You guys saw me baton the heck out of it, just send it through a lot of different wood. And of course it batoned it no problems without any issues. And of course the uh, feather sticking was just fine, admittedly. Um, I would probably lay the edge back just a little bit to make this thing a little bit more slicey. And I might actually end up doing that with my, uh, with my wicked edge. I might actually end up laying this blade back to around 18 degrees per side to make it a little bit more slicey. But as it stands, it's not too bad. And uh, when it comes to th doing things such as notching, it does a fantastic job at that as well. So 
Overall, for a duty knife, military, tactical, survival, uh, this is a pretty solid blade. And like I said, I think that really any application where you would plug in something like a Gerber Strongarm or Prodigy, I would probably recommend the BK18 or 16 over those knives because you're getting a better steel, you're getting better fit, better uh, ergonomics, and overall better features. Even the sheath itself is pretty darn solid. This one, I believe if I remember correctly, it does come with a belt loop, but I set mine up, of course, scout style with a tech lock, and uh, I definitely really like it. So overall, that's how I have mine set up. And it's pretty slick. Like I said, I do like scout style a lot. So that's why I set it up for scout style carry. And once again, it's a very versatile sheath option. You can mount to pals or molly, run it scout style or run it traditional, just how you would any other blade. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you liked taking a look at the little BK18. This one definitely is here to stay. And I really like it for being such an excellent budget option um, for the wilderness for being a solid wilderness blade uh, as always guys god bless and i'm out